Good afternoon. It's August 2nd, Tuesday, and my name is Becky, uh, Socks for Mom with a U, and I thought it was about time that I get caught up with you guys. Go grab your stitching and come sit down with me and let's get caught up. <music> To start today with some things that are in line waiting to be framed and then after that I'll show you a few things I've framed since the beginning of the year because I think the last time I filmed a floss tube was right before Christmas. So first up in January I was in Denver and I got together with some friends of mine from the Sampler Guild of the Rockies at Katrina's house and we decided we wanted to stitch this. This is the Scarlet House um, Entwined Hearts. It's on Aztec Red with all of the called for colors. And um, we put all of our initials, well, I put all of my initials on mine. Um, one of the gals made hers into a strawberry, which is beautiful. And then the rest of us did this. Very, very pretty. It'll hang on the wall with my other things that Tanya has designed. So that's the first thing. Um, next, actually, I think I might have finished this before that but I was working on some whips and I finished this. This is by Kathy Barrick and I've had it as a whip for a while. It says, I myself am made entirely of flaws stitched together with good intentions. Bright. I think we all can say that. So I love that. As you probably know, Kathy Barrett's one of my very favorite designers. Let's see here. The next thing I've been working on and finally finished is something I started with my friends uh, summer before last, I think. Or maybe it was last summer. And it's this by Lucy Bean. And it's Though He Seemeth Sleeping. I will put in the notes what colors I used. But I stitched this with two of my friends. And we actually got together this weekend and uh, started another one. Another another sow that reflects our faith. And I will show you that in a little bit. But this is mine. And it says, dark the night and wild the wave, Christ the boat is keeping. Trust in him and have no fear, though he seemeth sleeping. 
And this is a reference to when Jesus was on the water, on the lake, and a storm came up. And he was asleep through it. And his disciples said, don't you care about us, Lord? And he calmed the waves. And then um, I have another bunch of ladies that I stitch along with. And we take turns uh, giving assignments for whatever it is we pick. And that really keeps me on track. One of those is framed, and I'll show it to you in a minute. But this is the one we just finished. It's the ES Spot Sampler. By Of Female Worth. You can now get this as a download. And I've seen it at a couple places, so I believe um, it's being shared with other shops. We all decided we would put our initials in the middle, and there are mine, RW. And this was so much fun to stitch. It's so bright and colorful and cheery. ES Spot by Of Female Worth. It's been out of print for a while and has just been recharted. And those are the things that are waiting in line to be framed. I'm going to clean this up and I'll be right back to show you the things that I have framed since the beginning of the year. And the next thing I'm going to show you has been in the works for four years, I think. You've heard the story, um, but some of you may not have heard the story, but it's affectionately called That Thing on the Wall by myself and many of my friends and many of you. Uh, the story behind it is that I was visiting, we were visiting our daughter in Eastern Tennessee uh, they're no longer there. They're now in Pennsylvania. But I was at a um, stitching store there in Johnson City that I can't remember the name of it. But uh, I was trying to pick out something for our anniversary to stitch. And my husband came in and he saw his eyes on the sparrow hanging on the wall. And he sat down in a chair and I kept bringing him things. I said, how about this? And he'd say, no, I want that thing on the wall. And I'd bring him another thing and he'd say, no, I really like that thing on the wall. And I'd bring him something else. I really like that thing on the wall, Becky. <laughs> and so finally I said, okay, it's big. It's gonna take me a long time. And he said, that's okay because I really like that thing on the wall. <laughs> so here is that thing on the wall. I'm gonna have to scoot up to show you. Let's see if it fits the whole screen. There it is. I stitch it on 36 count. I don't know what the linen is um, because I didn't write it down. I wasn't paying attention to that kind of stuff back then, like I am now. But I used all the call for colors. The only thing I changed was the house. And it. I started it in the call for color and I finished it in the, the a red color. I think it's country redwood or it may be mulberry, but I saw someone do it and I loved it and I was going to change the whole thing and ask you guys what I should do and most of you said, no, 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 just keep it like that because that's how houses are in New England. So there's the house. There's the quirky cow. Um, there's the other quirky cow. 
His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. Where's the sparrow? I haven't found the sparrow. There's a sparrow in here somewhere. But you know what? If his eye's on that sparrow, then his eye's on me too. So I, I love this. I love that verse. And it's a treasure. It hangs over our fireplace now. <clears throat> There's Adam and Eve um, in their terracotta suntan. Let the honey comb. So I pinned this on. I pinned this on last Friday and Saturday. It took me about probably six hours but I was pretty persnickety with it, and I like how it turned out. I like how it stretched, and I had already been and picked out a frame for it. There you go. You can see a little better there. I like primitive. I picked out this frame, and I had them at Hobby Lobby cut the foam core, and I stretched and pinned it. So, this got me all fired up to start working on lilies. Lilies of the field is the companion piece. So that is my big, big finish. Those are all of my things I've framed since I was last with you. I'm gonna hang them back on the wall and I'll be back and we'll talk about what I've been working on. When I finished ES Spot, I had an itch for fall. And so I pulled out something in one of my very first project bags that's very flimsy. Um, I pulled out the Summer Schoolhouse series because I'd really like to finish them and have them. Um, this is going to be a fall project for me that I'm bound and determined to finish this year because I really enjoy it. I have never, ever, ever seen it and gotten tired of seeing it. That's what my friend Rachel said. She's the same way. She said lots of things you get tired when you see people stitching them over and over. But this one is done, the first, the first lesson, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then I just finished, let's see, where's my picture? The second lesson are two little pillows. Hmm. And I have finished it. H I J K. It's on 28 count Laguna over one, which would really be 56 count. They're going to be tiny. And next, I'm going to start. This one. I really enjoy stitching this one over one at night when we're watching TV. It's it's relaxing. So that is the Abbasidarian series, lessons in Abbasidarian, which means ABCs. So let me put that away really quick. Um so I will be taking this with me to Colorado. I'm going there for the fall to help my daughter with her. We're going to pick up her new puppy and I will be there helping her train him and being with him at night when she works and just getting her through that first part, just like moms do when babies come. Um, so I will be there uh, a couple months 
looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing my friends. Um, and my daughter. And the puppy. The next thing, since I was talking about ES Spot, I'll go ahead and show you what we all decided we wanted to do next was the Noel Sampler design by Brenda Gervais. It's a Christmas piece. We decided we wanted to do a Christmas piece and we all listed some things we'd like to do and we narrowed it down to this. I can't show it to you because uh, they need to get their clues first. And that will start, I'm giving them their, I'm, oh, I'm the one that's, I'm the one giving the, the assignments this time. So I'm a couple weeks ahead of them stitching and I will give them their first assignment August 12th. So I'll show it to you then. Um, and speaking of Christmas, my friend Barb and I, she is Chestertown Stitcher. We decided we wanted to, to start the Christmas sampler. It was both on both of our list of something we wanted to do. And I had a really rough start with this. I tried so many colors and I just wasn't getting the look I liked. I ripped out and I put new colors in. This is what I had. I even put my grandma's initials in there and my mom's and it just wasn't something I was looking forward to because we work on this every day divisible by five. That was Barb's idea. And it's working. So every five days I work on this. Well, um, she kept asking me if maybe it was the linen color. And then I saw my friend Cynthia was doing it on some linen we had bought together. And I really liked, I really liked it on this. And so I decided to do it on this and I absolutely love it. Sadly, you can't get this linen anymore. It's it's a brassy color. It's still not coming across as brassy as it, well, maybe right there. Maybe right there it is. It's brassy as it is, but uh, we both fell in love with the Stone Stitch, Stone Creek Stitcher, I think. I'll put her name right here. She was doing a Dickens version, and I am a huge Dickens fan. I love his books. And so I went with her colors, except for my red. My red is my original Cherry Cobbler by Weeks Dye Works. Let's see what I have here. Um, my, this right here is Weeks Dye Works Caper. And then I have DMC 3031, DMC 3033, and some accent right here, DMC 3790. And I just really love that. Oh, I should have opened it up a little bit further than, oops. I'm down to, oops, I'm out of practice. There, I got about that much. And Barb and I work on this yeah, I already told you, didn't I? Every five days. <laughs> oh, I've got all these sows. Oh, goodness. So, um, 
I'll continue working on that till we finish it. So those are some things I'm working on. When my friends came together here um, last weekend, last weekend, Cynthia and Rachel, Rachel's floss tube is, um, Cynthia's is stitching in the light and Rachel's is stitch and be well. They came for a little sleepover so we could start our next thing together. It was really nice for them just to get away from their very, very, very busy family life. And I'm at the stage of my life where I could, uh, it was wonderful to have them here. So we decided we wanted to stitch the Sweet Temper Sampler designed by Shakespeare's Peddler. She's a very big girl. Let me see what her stitch count is. She's deceivingly big. We didn't think it was very big at all, but it is actually, let's see. The original was stitched on R&R &R Cream Brulee. And the stitch count is 301 by 297. That's big. But I actually have a thrift frame it will fit in. So this is what I have so far. Let me fold it. I'm stitching mine on Ugh, it's a lakeside. I'm gonna have to look back at my notes to figure out what it is. I am stitching mine on a lakeside that has a little bit of green in it. And this is what I have so far. It's a really cute, cute stitch minder that Rachel brought each of us. So that's what I have. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. My friend Judy, actually earlier this year, I had an exchange, we had an exchange of thread keeps and um, we each took a picture of a sampler and made thread keeps out of it. And Judy just happened to send me the sweet temper ones. So I'm using them and I'm using all of the DMC that's called for. The only thing I've changed, and it was because of my linen, is I switched the accru for 3865, so it'll show up better. So um, that's going to be exciting. It'll take us a while um, to get that one done. And I made them each a bag to um, go with it. So that's a new start for me. All righty. What else am I working on? Um, in May, I did a Kathy Barrick Mania, and I pulled out a whole bunch of Kathy Barrick whips and worked on them. But I'm not going to show those to you. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing right now. I did start Consider the Lilies, and I plan on working on it on Sundays. I'm also doing this with my friend Barb and Pat, and we're working on it on Sundays, and then our birth dates each month. <laughs> I know, you guys think I'm so wacko. But um, so that would be the first, the seventh, and the 25th. I think it's the seventh. I'm gonna have to check that. This is what I have so far. I did get the border all the way down and around the corner. I 
It seems so much smaller than Sparrow to me, but it's on 40 count. It's on 40 count Dusty Seraphim. I mean, Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics. It's really pretty. They're changing the colors of their flowers to be more pink. But not me. <laughs> I always stick to the colors <laughs> that the designer did. But that's just really pretty. So I have a page finish. This is actually page one. And I have the pattern, but I ended up going back and getting the PDF because I really loved working with the PDF for His Eyes on the Sparrow that Beth came out with um, years later. So you can highlight it and it's just easier to keep up with where you are. So that's his eye is on the, consider the lilies. I'm, I'm kind of um, brainwashed, not brainwashed. My memory is wanting to say his eyes on the sparrow. And I'm using all the call for colors. Sorry. Um, they're on one of my Stitching Girl floss tubes. And I bought this from Mad for Minders, maybe. These are my border colors. Just keep them on this. And then this is a very vibrant palette compared to Sparrow, which is more muted. It'll be really, really pretty. I don't think I have all the colors there. So that is his eye is on the Sparrow. Let's see. The other thing I really would like to finish this fall. Well, I'm, I'm working on it first thing in the mornings. Three threads every morning, first thing is um, Maria Finney, and it is an Adam and Eve. And I kept the linen that came in the kit from Country Stitchers. It's Weeks Dye work, Works Cocoa, I believe. The Corpulent Angels. But I love the splashes of blue in this. I think it's really pretty. Uh, that's a really pretty vase. And then my friend Kristen calls this vase on the other side. Looks like a, looks like an egg. <laughs> that's all white. It'll be all white or not white. It's actually wheat Dye Work Fawn. So that is my Adam and Eve sampler I'm working on every day. Hope to have that finished in September. I'll use September to, to finish it up if it's not. And let's see if there's anything else I want to share with you. Um, I think that's it. I mean, I have other things in here, but I'm, oh yeah. I also pulled this out because it's overdue. Overdue in my head. I started this the day I sold, we sold our house on all the acreage. We had 65 acres. We had inherited my father-in-law's um, land and his beautiful house that was way too big for us. We are, by the way, we're very happy in this one. We bought a smaller one in town. We decided we wanted to come back and live in Athens and we're really happy with the footprint of it. No stairs. Um, it's a thousand feet smaller, <laughs> which has been a challenge, but it's really the best size for us. So my goal was to start this on the day we closed on that house and finish it on the day we moved into this house. And that didn't happen. But I pulled it out because I pulled out all my frames that I have uh, collected from Goodwill and various places, and I kind of assigned things to them. 
so that I, I don't have to spend framing money for a little bit. And this is all I have, is the bottom part. Decided I'd start from the bottom. It's very pretty. The colors are, you know, blackbird. Uh, let's see, that's a little bit better. I don't remember, it's on the call for linen. Let me see what that was. Thirty-six count legacy by Picture This Plus. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's legacy though. And I think that is all I want to share with you, other than a sow. I'm not sure what the date is because I didn't bring my book of days, but in the spring. Hmm. I kind of think it was April. Um, we drove up to Denver and I attended a, re a Sampler Guild of the Rockies retreat, which was just fabulous. Uh, it was, the setting was wonderful. Uh, sitting with friends was great. There was a shop there. So I did a little bit of shopping and um, it was just a great time. We had Tanya of the Scarlet House had designed a sampler for us, an Adam and Eve sampler, and Doris had these cute, cute things sitting in our, our at our places. It's, it's made with Liberty and London fabric. She, look at this, this is incredible what she did. This is a little Oort basket and a pair to sit in it, also with Liberty of London fabric. And she, um, it's a pin cushion. Isn't that great? I love it. I love it. Love it. Um, thank you, Doris. I don't think you watch my video, but um, I do. I do thank you for that. I really need to get a thank you card out to you because I know it was a lot of work to do that for everybody there. This was the sampler by the Scarlet House. Eliza Rossiter, she was nine and she stitched this in 1853. It's an Adam and Eve. So look for that in the future. Um, after we've had it for a year, I think San, um, Tanya will release it. It's very sweet. We got some linen. I'm trying to think what this is called. Let me look and see if it's... I'm not sure if this is it. 40 count dirty teacup from Needle and Flax, and all the um, threads are over dyed cottons from Weeks Dye Works. It's 169 by 247. I opted for the 40 count, and let me show it to you. I'm going to have to check on this linen. I'm not sure if that's what they went with. So here's my little bit that I worked on it. It's fun to have a sampler with blue. So there we have it. Eliza Rossiter. Whoops. Something else that we had planned to do while I was there Katrina and Judy and I. Katrina did this first, and Judy and I oohed and awed over it, so we wanted to do it too. So Katrina brought everything for us to over dye the threads for Eliz Elizabeth Hunt. There's another Elizabeth. This is another pretty one by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. 
And so in here, she instructs you how to over dye some of the DMC. I love that it's stitched with DMC. And here are the colors after we over dyed them. I wish I had a before and after picture, but I don't. The one I think that is most noticeable for being over dyed is this right here. This was a very bright um, color. And this pink was toned down quite a bit. So that was really fun to do. Um, we gave them, I say we, but, but Judy and I basically watched Katrina take charge and do it for us. <laughs> Thanks, Katrina. <laughs> I love that you did that. So she basically demonstrated to us how to do it with our threads. So we just stood by and, and watched her do it. So it's just a coffee, coffee bath. And the book tells you how to do it. So I will look forward to stitching that. I did start it a little bit because I was just dying to, dying to see what those colors look like. I, I am using, um, Antique Cotton by R&R, &R, 40 count. And I started right smack in the middle because I wanted to see that fireplace and see how that blue was gonna do. The blue's the roof. Do I have this upside down? I do. The red is the brick on the chimney, and the blue is going to be the roof. Right there. So that will be a lot of fun to do. I'm telling you, so many fun things. I guess I will take these with me to Colorado and work on them in Sampler September. And while I was there, one of the things I picked up was Humming of the Bees by Blackbird Designs because the little group that did ES Spot, we talked how fun this would be to do in the spring. Really, really pretty. So friends, I think that's about it. When I've been gone a long time, I have a lot to share. I hope this isn't too long. I hope that you have not um, gotten bored because <laughs> I'm really out of practice, but it was great doing this again and I hope to do it again soon. Like I said, I'm leaving in a couple weeks to go to Colorado and I am going to attach some Brinkley photos at the end. That's the puppy that Allison got. He's a golden retriever. He's six weeks old right now. He'll be ready in two weeks. And he is in Idaho. And we're going to drive um, part way, halfway to meet the breeder and bring him home with us. She has lots of plans for him. She really wants him to be a hospital dog to go around and um, have the children visit with him. They do have hospital dogs there at Children's Hospital. So he is going to have to be a little better trained than Brody was. And by the way, we miss Brody so much. Um, thank you for all your kind comments. When, um, when he left and crossed the Rainbow Bridge, we, I, that was one of the reasons I wasn't filming Floss Tube was because I just wanted to spend every minute with him. I could. 
He came here to live in Texas in January so that he could have a yard. And the last two nights of his life, he slept out there and um, it was like he was waiting for Allison to get here and then he just really let her know immediately, pretty fast, that he was ready to go and she slept outside with him. And um, he passed very peacefully in our arms. And boy, we do love our animals, don't we? Um, it's kind of bittersweet getting Brinkley because we still miss Brokely, Brody, but anyways, enough of that. Enjoy the little puppy pictures and I hope to be back soon. Thanks, bye. Sunshine gonna wash my blues away Cause now I'm knee deep in the water somewhere Got the blue sky breeze blowing wind through my hair Only worry in the world is the tide gonna reach my chair Sunrise, there's a fire in the sky Never been so happy, never felt so high And I think I might have found me my own kind of paradise This champagne Sure, washing over me. It's a sweet, sweet life living by the salt to sea. One day you could be as lost as me. Change your geography. Maybe you might be. Knee deep in the water somewhere. Got the blue sky breeze blowing wind through my hair. Only worry in the world is a tide going. Sunrise is a fire.